Well, the old saw goes, uh, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. Or figures don't lie, but liars sure do figure. Or I won't get fooled again. It just shows to go you that sometimes statistics can be misleading, even to the best or worst well-intended. Consider, if you will, a world where maybe 1% um, have uh, some malady, 1% uh, of the parts uh, fail, 1% uh, of the dogs don't like the new cheese-flavored treat, or what have you. And you've developed a test to differentiate the two, testing for the malady, the bad part, or those dogs that just don't like that new flavored treat. And it happens to be 99% accurate, which sounds pretty good to you. At least it does to me. And you take your test and you apply it to, let's say, oh, a population of a million, which means that 1% would be, say, 10,000 of that million, and you get the results. And you get the results, and sure enough, the 1% of a million's 10,000, 99% accuracy, and you detect 9,900. And for the remaining group, that's the remaining 990,000, and 1% of the test will predict the wrong way, and that's also 9,900 cases. Oh my... And right about here, some of you realize what I'm doing is what's called Bayesian analysis. Namely, that of the groups that I've selected, even though with 99% accuracy and you know, only 1% happens to be the one we're testing for, we find out we have a 50-50% chance of getting a response for either group. Now, and that's something. And it seems like all your labor has gone for naught, but maybe not so fast. You did correctly 99% of the time detect those for which you had an interest, and for the other 1%, which you falsely included 50% of the time, unless the uh, treatment is unduly expensive or dangerous, you might consider them maybe as a control group, a placebo. Have you heard about the new improved placebo? And... uh you can probably include them without any danger, but maybe not.